You're welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P4 International A Level exam from Edexcel. And this question here, we have a question about um, differential equations. Okay, so the current x amps at time t seconds after a switch is closed in a particular electric circuit is modeled by the equation dx dt equals k minus 3x, where k is a constant, like a number. Initially, there is zero current in the circuit. So the current is x, the current is x, and initially is when time equals zero. So basically, when time equals zero, x equals zero, that's what they're telling us. So solve the differential equation to find an equation in terms of k, for the, for the current in the circuit at time t seconds, give your answer in the form x equals f of t. So basically, we're going to have equation x equals some function of t. So be, there'll be t in the answer, and there'll also be k in the answer. Right? So we won't have found the value of k in the first part of this question. So now, what we're going to do is, um, we're going to set up the differential equation. So we know that dx dt is equal to k minus 3x. Now, when you're solving a differential equation, you're basically um, differentiating, you're basically getting rid of the rate, like you're getting rid of the dx, we want to get rid of the dx dt, we don't want to have dx dt. So when you solve, for example, a differential equation, for example, even if we had dy dx equals 2x, this is a differential equation, why? Because it has a dy dx in it. Okay, it's a first order differential, differential equation because it doesn't have like d squared y over dx squared or d cubed y over d, dx cubed. It's just the first order, it just has dy dx. And when you solve the differential equation, you are basically making it say y equals some function of x. We are getting rid of the dy dx. That's what solving differential equations are. So we've been solving differential equations from P1. When we, the time we did P1, the first time we saw integration, we are basically solving differential equations. That's what that is. Okay, that's basically what solving a differential equation is. Right. So here, what we would do here, if we were, if we wanted to solve this in P1, we would write this like right, this would be y equals, and you'd say you know x squared, two x squared over two. That would give us the answer. But what actually we're doing is we are integrating this side with respect to x. And we're also integrating this side with respect to x. We cancel out, what's the integral of one with respect to y? It's y. This side becomes the integral of one dy, okay? Because those dx's cancel out. What's the integral of one with respect to y? It's y. What's the integral of two x with respect to x? It's x squared over, it's two x squared over two, gives you x squared. And then you put plus c, for the constant of integration. Right, so that's basically is something that we were doing without realizing it in the early um, part of our understanding of integration. All right, so that's basically what I'm going to do here. And that's the way I like to explain this. A lot of people don't do it like this, but I'm doing to one side of the equation, okay, what I'm doing to the other. So I'm integrating this side with respect to t, I'm also integrating this side with respect to t. So what happens is these t can dt's cancel out, and I'm left with k minus 3x dt. And this is like you can say a product, all right? This whole thing, k minus 3x is like a product of dt, you could say, all right? So if I want to now solve this, um, this differential equation here, I have to what's called separate the variables, okay? In this case, there was no need to separate anything. Everything was in the right place. But here, where it says dx, the x terms must be there. Where it says dt, the t terms must be there, right? So this is like a product, you can say, it's this bracket times dt, you could say, right? So for me to make sure that this ends up on the side with dx, I have to divide by k minus 3x. So I have the integral of 1 over k minus 3x dx equals the integral of t one with respect to there's no there's no t term so we'll just put one dt okay and we want to find 
Um, we want to find an equation in terms of k. Okay, now, there's different ways that we can, can continue here. Um, we're going to end up with a plus c if we do a indefinite integral. I like to do things in differential equations with definite integrals. So we want to find an equation of x in terms of t. And I know when x is 0, t is 0. Right? They, we, we, they told us initially when t is 0, there is 0 current in the circuit. So x is 0 when t is 0. So though, using those limits, I, I will avoid having to even use um, the constant of integration. So now I want to integrate 1 over k minus 3x with respect to x. Remember, k is just a constant. Here we're going to use the reverse of the chain rule with lin. We know that uh, if you differentiate the new denominator, this will become 0, this will become minus 3. So it's of the form f dash of x over f of x. It's of this form, which we can then reverse the chain rule for. So I'm going to write here, um, I'll put my brackets, I'll have the lin of the modulus. Remember when you in integrate the lin of uh, 1 over something x, it becomes the lin of the modulus of x, so lin of k minus 3x. Then I have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function, which is negative 3. Okay, that's how we deal with reversing the chain rule for this. It's k times some function, uh, some differential of what's in the denominator. It's in this form, that's how we deal with it. And our limits are x and 0. And of course, if I integrate 1 with respect to t, I get t. So I've got t and 0 is my limits. Now, um, I'm going to take out the 1 third, minus 1 third. I'm going to have here the lin of k minus 3x minus the lin of k. Okay, because minus 3 times 0 is 0. All right, so it's lin of k. All right, is equal to t minus 0. Okay, now we can simplify what's in here. We have uh, minus a third times the lin of k minus 3x over k. Now, what does it say about the value of k? is a constant all right now and that's equal to t okay and we want to make x the subject we want to have it in the form x equals some function of t all right so by by doing this we've automatically find the value of c by the way all right um anyway let's continue we want to find make this a subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides. So first of all, I'm going to multiply both sides by, um, or I'm going to uh, multiply both sides by 3, okay, which gives you minus lin of the modulus of k minus 3x over k is equal to 3t. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to rewrite this um, well, I can do this. I can say lin of the modulus of k minus 3x over k is equal to minus 3t. Okay. And now I can rewrite this in index form. I know that the log to the base a of b equals c can be rewritten as a to the power of c equals b. So remember, lin means log to the base e. The lin of x is log to the base e of x. Right, so here we have e to the power of negative 3t is equal to k minus 3x over k. So I can make um, this x a subject. I can multiply both sides by k. So I have k times e to the power of minus 3t is equal to k minus 3x. Right, so I have 3x equals k minus k times e to the power of minus 3t. So x is going to be k minus k times e to the power of minus 3t all over 3. If we want to take that k out as common, we can. Over 3. Right, so that is x as some function of t. All right, so there's the answer, and that's in terms of k. So there is the answer for this question. Part A, we've got the general solution in terms of k okay so we haven't
found the value of k. We don't have enough information to find the value of k so far. But that's um, part A of the question finished. Okay, now for part B. It says, given that in the long term, the current in the circuit approaches 7 amps, find the value of k. So in the long term, what it means, basically, as t approaches a very large number. Okay, as t is a really big number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this in a way that I can um, analyze that better. Um, because, actually, you can even look, look at it like this. You have k times... 1 minus, and I'll write this as 1 over e to the power of 3t divided by 3. So I'll just multiply both sides by, by 3. Okay, so I've rewritten this, just writing that as e to the power of 3 over t. 1 over e to the power of 3 over t. Just write it as this reciprocal. Now they said, as t approaches a very large number, the amp approaches 7. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the x with 7. So this will be 3 times 7 equals um, k times 1 minus. Now, when you put e to the power of 3t, okay, and as t approaches a very large number, e to the power of 3t will also approach a very large number because this has become like infinite. And 1 over e to the power of a very large number will approach zero you have one over a huge number it's going to get closer to zero so this is going to approach zero as as t gets close to infinity and x gets closer to seven all right so basically your value of k is going to be 21 21 equals k so k is equal to 21 there's the answer to part b all right so you just have to just when it says in the long term it means as a time becomes really big so you, you, you basically replace this with a really big number, okay? Um, which you know that 1 over some really huge number. E to the power of a huge number is going to be a huge number. 1 over a huge number is going to get close to 0. So this will start getting close to 1. So you'll have k times 1 equals 3 times 7, which is 21. Right, so that's how we can approach such a question. And then we've got to f finish off with part C. It says, hence, find... The time in seconds, okay, for the current to reach 5 amps, giving you answer to two significant figures. Let's just make sure of something. T is in seconds, that's fine, just to just confirm, because sometimes they will, might trick you on the units. So here it says, um, we know the value of K now is 21, right? So I can say that um, X equals 21 over 3, which is 7. 21 over 3, 7. So x is going to be 7 times 1 minus e to the power of negative 3t. That's now our equation with the value of k as 7. Okay, we know that k is equal, sorry, k equals 21. All right, so 21 over 3 gives you 7, and we're left with this. Now, they've told us to find the time it takes for, the, for x to be, we want to find what t is, when x is equal to 5. So I can take this equation here, all right, and I can just place the x with 5 and find what t is. So 5 equals 7 times 1 minus e to the power of negative 3t. So I can divide both sides by 7. 1 minus e to the power of negative 3t. I can add e to the power of 3t to both sides. e to the power of negative 3t to both sides. That will give me 1 minus 5 over 7, which is 2 over 7. Okay, now what I like to do myself here is I like to keep this as a positive power. It doesn't really matter. So if I put this as e to the power of 3t, it's like I've written this number as this reciprocal. Because it's like this, you know, this is like 1 over e to the power of 3t. This is what this means. So if I write this, I've written this as a reciprocal. So I can write this fraction also as this reciprocal. If it's just one fraction, you can do that. And now I want to solve this for t. So I can take the lin of both sides. If I take the lin of both sides, log to the base e of both sides, this becomes 3t on this side, and this becomes a lin of 7 over 2. And then I can just divide both sides by 3, so I have a third times the lin of 7 over 2, so that should give us our answer. So you have 1 over 3 times the lin of 7 
over 2. That gives us 0 0.4175, 0 0.4175. And the question asks us to give the answer to two significant figures. Okay, so we want to give the answer to two significant figures. So we just round this to the second significant figure, which is going to give you t equals 0 0.42 seconds. Okay, and the question says, how many, t find the time seconds. All right, so there's the answer to part C, and that concludes the question, question number seven from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P4 paper. I hope that was clear. All about differential equations and then some of logarithms and exponential equations and so on. Um, so um, other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that will appear in the top right of the screen at the end of this video. Other questions from the topic of differential equations, you'll find them in the playlist over here. I'll put a playlist for integration in general uh, in this region. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link at the top um, of the screen at the end of the video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.